eight. Beautiful day here. Yeah. It is yeah. nice. It's finally warming up. I walked outside. Didn't eat a coat yesterday. I walked to McDonald's twice. It was wonderful weather. Except McDonald's was... Oh, well, you just didn't give me the right tea, well, but that's no problem. Well... Twice. Uh, here we go. But, okay, uh, never mind. Uh, anyway, Start off fast. We are here to talk today about plating on brass. We're going to talk about the difference between the different raw brasses that you can buy. We're going to talk about the difference between raw brass and satin matte gold brass, which look really similar. We're going to talk about the difference between brass ox and what brass ox is anyway. People say, like, what is brass ox? And we're going to talk about the difference between it and the chocolate finishes that are out there. And the chocolate kiss, kiss finish that I carry. We are going to show you some aqua green. Aqua. Aqua copper. I can't say it right. ACP we call it. Aqua copper patina brass, which is an artisan finish and very special. We're going to show you again about rusty black, which is an artisan finish which you can buff back. We are going to talk to you about the new matte black line and what the difference is between it and rusty black and maybe some of the gunmetal finishes that you see out there. I have some examples to show you. And lastly, we are going to talk about our specialty finish, which is kind of expensive, but worth it. And that is silverware silver plate, which is a fine silver finish. It looks like sterling. The only way you're going to get better is to graduate to precious metal, which we all know costs an arm and a leg right now. Um, it's nickel free. It's made in the United States. It's made with a vintage recipe. And there is just nothing like it. And that's just it. We're going to compare mm -hmm. it with some old silver finish that we used to carry in that a lot of brass vendors still carry and show you the difference in it. And then after that, it's going to be up to you whether you want to use quality or whether the other is okay for you. And there may be times the other is okay for you, especially if you're doing patina over it. But then I'd say use raw brass. You yeah. don't spend anything for plating. I'm going to show you a few examples of something made in satin matte gold so you can see the difference. And also something made with mixed metals because a lot of our metal finishes mix beautifully. A lot of the things I'm wearing right now are a combination of mixed metals, patinas, iced enamels, resin. And that's my favorite. You know, when I see just, a mixed I metal love piece. things that are mixed. Mm -hmm. And so you can have so much fun that way too. So come on over here. Don and I are going to try and talk in a slow way and really make a good explanation for you so that you won't um, wonder anymore no. about these finishes. You'll understand what they are. You'll know what to look for yeah, you'll know what when you, want. you go out to buy things. We hope you'll come to BeSuperTeaks.com because that's where the good stuff is. Yes. Let me show you. Okay, so we're going to get started by showing you a piece of very pretty jewelry. A simple uh, pendant that's in mixed metals. It has a little bit of silver finish medallions along the sides, some little check glass pearls, some gold plated bead and link chain which we carry at bsuboutiques.com and then a combination pendant in, in which the center is um, an old piece of jewelry that was broken that I set for a mount. This is satin matte gold. This bottom piece is satin matte gold. And I'm going to show you now the difference between it and raw brass. Okay, so some have wondered. You don't know if you'd like to slip that back over here. Okay, this material here is the satin matte gold. Is that picking up, Cody? Okay, there's a bunch of pieces here. There's some hoop earrings. There's an I love you. As you can see, there's no um, antiquing on this. You can put antiquing on this. Um, patina gilder's paste goes on this really good. Um, Pinotage goes on this really good. If you want to make like a Russian gold plated look, you can do that. A little bit of black paint, wipe on, wipe off, works good. But it has a very satiny, sleek appearance. And why this is special is it is a precious metal finish, so it costs more than raw brass by a good bit. It's 18 karat gold, 3 mils thick over the brass. So when you hold a piece of it up to raw brass, you might have a little bit of trouble telling the difference. So when we send it out to people, um, 
we have an invoice that goes out with it and also it's labeled on the packaging and then you can keep it separate so that you'll know which is which the satin matte gold feels a little bit sleeker it has a mellow glow the color of it is more uniform and raw brass has a very very slight how oh, green undertone to it you have to be looking for it though so that is the main difference this basically this is 18 karat gold plated but you can get that look with raw brass so if you want to go that route I'm going to show you what you need to do okay I'm going to move this over okay and just show you some different types of raw brass okay this is raw unadorned unplated brass that's just been degreased when brass comes in and has no plating on it you may feel kind of greasy that's because it's struck with dyes at 25,000 pounds pressure underneath and on top to make this pattern and those dyes are maintained by machine oil so that gets on the brass sometimes so you have to clean it a really good way to degrease your brass is hot hot water and ivory soap bath wash it really good rinse it in vinegar and you should be good to go and you would want to do that before you applied any colors or anything over it to get that oil off so this is raw unadored brass nothing's been done to it if you use this and you don't do anything to it except clean it in time it will oxidize and it will get tarnished some people are fine with that but it may react to some people's skin if you don't seal it so it's up to you but that's what it looks like and it is very mellow and it almost does look like 18 karat gold we use rich low brass that is the type of brass that you want your jewelry stampings made from so at bsuboutiques.com we we order only rich low brass and nothing else we it's not acceptable to us it goes back if it's not rich low okay this is a piece of raw brass that has been exposed to air for some time it's a little bit older so it's got a little bit of reddish patina coming on it why the red patina well that's because rich low brass is 85 percent copper 15 percent zinc so you're seeing the copper coming out it's really quite pretty if you like that you could seal it with a, a shot of krylon matte spray lacquer both sides and use it like that if you want it but that's what's happening here okay on this piece this is a piece I put under my torch so it's got a little bit of funky patina to it but that's what torch patina looks like you'll get blues in it you'll get dark bronzes and coppers and all kinds of different funky colors in it okay this piece of course is a piece of raw brass that has been cleaned and then spray painted white and then I did the tea stain you might remember the tea stain video I did it over the back I did it over the top then I distressed it with fine steel wool this is zero 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 quadruple ot steel wool you can get at the hardware store and I distressed it I kept adding color and I added uh, some more tea stain and let it sit and distress it some more then I added a little bit of patina gilders paste which I uh, made into a paint with uh, mineral spirits and put over there and let that set and distress it some more and then when it was all cured I hit it with a layer of ice resin and that's why it is glistening and this is gorgeous and it looks quality yeah it is quality I mean, it shows. and you can do this I mean I did this but it's not quality just because I did it it's quality because uh, the way it's done you can do this too and it will help you to change up the way your brass looks and make it unique to yourself so I can't encourage you enough to use raw brass and change it up experiment with color experiment with mixed media materials and find a new way to make it your own using color because uh, you certainly can and you can do it with cold enamel processes that are non-toxic you don't need to to use the the, the uh, vitreous uh, enamels um, although there is a way I understand to do the torch fired patinas um, over top of grass now I don't know how I think it involves flux I know someone had a, a course on it that you could take so you could investigate that 
on Google if you wanted to. But as for me, I'm happy just doing acrylics and ice resin. It's, it's easier and it's very durable and it's the least toxic way. So that's how that works. Okay, let me move this out of the way. Oh, one last thing. This is gilt brass. What is gilt brass? It's very simply brass that has been polished to a high shine with either a Dremel or a buffing wheel, big buffing wheel, or by hand with a sunshine cloth. I did this with a sunshine cloth. I buffed it out by hand, and then I sealed it two coats of Krylon lacquer to the front, two coats to the back. And it's as simple as this. I use a sunshine cloth. You can see this is black. I would not want to continue to use the black part of this because it's picked up grip so it could rub it back into your piece. So I'll use the other side. And I simply just work it like this. And I'll just shine it. Poor Javi, she's got a cold this week. She's over here stifling a cough. <laughs> but she valiantly came to work anyway to make our video. And you can see it's buffing up to a shine. So if I kept going with that, I'd get it looking nice. It's and beautiful. pretty. Really it is pretty. Is. And then you have to seal it. Just don't expect it to stay nice if you don't seal it. So Krylon, matte spray lacquer, or any of this matte spray lacquers, or even a satin. I wouldn't use gloss, so I don't think I'd like that. But, I mean, you could try it. Why not? That's how that works. And we do carry sunshine cloths at the site. You may have some in your stash. Okay, let's talk about the difference between brass ox. and chocolate kiss brass. Okay, brass ox has been very popular in the jewelry making trade for a long, long time and it simply stands for oxidized brass. But it isn't brass that's been let set around to patina on its own. This is commercially applied. It's a dip finish. Um, ours comes with a black um, antique on top that is very muted and that's what sets ours apart because you can really see detail. A lot of the brass ox that you buy out there that's you know really inexpensive or maybe it's coming from the Orient has a slight green to it that looks just a little sick <laughs> in my estimation or it just lacks definition because they haven't done the black antique. So we spend a little bit extra and have the black antique put over top and that's why you can read Real good, like this one says, my heart belongs to daddy. You can really read that. You can really see it because of the black antiquing. You can see the definition on the edge of this puffy heart. You can see the lady playing her harp. You can even see the strings of the harp. Um, so that's why our brass ox is, is a really good brass ox. And it's nickel free. And brass ox is actually a very good finish to use to apply patina and colors. You can go over top of it. It's not a very expensive finish, so it's not a huge loss if you do some color over it. And then when you do color over, you already have your finished backs. So that's one nice feature about it. So I use color over brass ox quite often. Okay, I'll set these aside and I'll talk to you about the chocolate kiss. Chocolate kiss is an artisan finish. And this is unlike any of the chocolate brass there. Um, this is supplied by an artisan. It is a combination of an antique copper, a chocolate brown, and a little bronze. And it's buffed out slightly so that the copper comes up. So it is simply gorgeous. And there's nothing else like it out there. And it's very reasonable. Our Chocolate Kiss Brass tends to cost less than some of the others call wholesale. Much guess that if you come to our website, those filigree are going to be three dollars, three and a half, because we don't mark our stuff up like that, and we still have a quality product. Now I want to show you what happens if you take a little bit of steel wool and go over this. Okay, I'm going to do this one because it might be easier. You just bring up more of the background when you do that. And you can do this with a lot of chocolate lines, not just ours. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to trash everybody else's stuff. I'm just telling you why ours is different at Bisu Boutiques and why we think it's 
really super duper stuff and why we'd appreciate it if you'd come on over and try some. What I've done is I've just brought up highlights. And in that way it makes it easier too to apply patina because sometimes I like to add a little color to this as well and it comes up really nice. Now I've got a mess because that's what that steel wool does. I'm going to do this piece too. This piece will really show detail when I do that. It's just as simple as that guys. A little bit of steel wool. And then once again this is the quadruple aught steel wool. That means four zeros. Very fine. You don't want real rough stuff. Try not to take the paint off my table. That wouldn't be too good. What this does basically is it buffs it back to the brass underneath. And I, I really haven't worked on this too much yet, but for lack of time, that's as far as I'm going to go. You see it goes to the brass underneath. And then, of course, if you did this, you'd want to seal it again. And I recommend the Krylon Matte Spray Lacquer. That's my favorite. But a lot of the matte spray lacquers out there would happen, too. Would, would happen. It would work, too. Do you have any questions about this, Donna? You've been kind of quiet. You know what? Because I'm completely interested in what, you know, I'm interested in what you're saying. I've got a front row seat, and I get to see these firsthand. And I just say, you I'm You have to amazed. handle this stuff all I the do. time. I do. When it comes in in these big boxes, I'm not going nuts. I'm you know, but I... I see the quality of these finishes, and you know, I I love watching her, what she's doing. Uh, I don't have any actual questions. You've just really been doing well explaining everything. That's probably good for you to hear this stuff. Yeah, too. it is. It see, is. I lifted this a little bit so you could see the detail on this medallion a little bit more too. But you can see it's got like a lot of darkness. It's got copper tones. It's got chocolate tones. This is marvelous stuff. It's by. I don't know how many steps he takes in this process. Until I saw and you bump that, I didn't realize how much it could pop. Yeah, like that. yeah. That's, that's, the, that's just it. If you like the matte yeah, look of it, I leave, like leave it alone. That. You don't have to seal it again. It's already sealed. But if you go and you buff this out a little bit, you need to reseal it because you're taking it back down to the brass underneath. Mm -hmm. So this is a commercially applied finish, but it's an artisan finish. There's some hand work on this too, okay? So it's really wonderful, and again, it is totally and completely nickel-free, and we call it Chocolate Kiss. It's yummy. Okay, now to get to another finish, um, this is our old Rosox, and this is completely different. Are you picking that up good, Javi? Do I have it back to her? This is completely different than any of the antique copper that you see out there because it has a shine to it. And it reminds me very much of the sort of finish that they used to put on the old Matisse Renoir pieces from the 50s. So if you collect vintage jewelry and then you look at this, you might say, hey, yeah, kind of, sort of. That finish was a little darker than this, but not a lot. So it gives you the look of real copper, actually, doesn't it? It does. You know what I mean? When I look at this, I know I've had ladies that show pick these pieces up and say, hey, is that copper? It's just so quality. Because you know, they, they, they think it's copper. It's, a, it's copper plated over brass is what it is. And we've got our little three part roses. These are actually assembled by hand in three parts and then they do it with, they put the uh, rivet in the middle with a kick press. But this finish doesn't, um, it doesn't take um, patina too good. You kind of want to use it the way it is. It doesn't take color real, real well. It doesn't need it. Um, if you try to put swelling in over it, it's resistant to it. It doesn't, doesn't like it. What's the best um, thing to put swelling in on? Swelling in is very good over rusty black because that's an iron oxide finish, so it will react. I remember you said it. one was really good. Yeah, um, Several, actually. Yeah, that one's really good. Um, you, can put it, you can really put it over anything, but you might have to put a metal coating down first for, for it to react with. Okay. But um, this one, it will hardly react at all. Just dull it. So don't don't put any yeah, don't up. put any traditional patina products over this. Try to use it the way it is because it, that's the way it's meant to be used. And we sell a lot of smaller pieces in this line because it's so good for accent and mixed metals. It's super good for mixed metals. So you're going to want to try out some old Rosox. And once again, it's nickel free and made in the United States. So let me set this aside. This is our Aqua Copper Patina Brass. And it is done over a matte copper rocks that we don't carry anymore, but we had it 
aqua I put over it's an artisan finish so we carry some bigger pieces but a lot of accent pieces as time goes on as time goes on we find people like this and the, they like it in the uh, tulip bead cap which we ran out of immediately as soon as we yeah, got it the acorn beacon they like it in the larger bead caps they like it in the hoops uh, they like it in the mermaids because it looks like she's got vertigree from the sea yeah. they like it in nautical items they like it in this cuff which is our dimpled cuff we had this dimple cuff in brass ox rose ox chocolate ox a raw brass bunch of colors it's awesome this piece would be really great if you bent it like we have done so many times we have videos on that we have videos on this if you want to go back just bend it and you can make a cuff out of this you could turn the ends back you could drill the ends but you can see if i keep bending this i could actually you know apply it to the top of this cuff and get it to fit. I could probably even, if I had a heavy enough drill and large enough rivets, I could even rivet that on there. That would take some strength, That's but beautiful. you could do it, you know. So you could use it together or separate. But anyway, we have select pieces in this. It's not a large line, but it is an artisan line. Some of it's handwork and some of it's commercial work. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside. That tells you about what that is. Okay, now, this is the Rusty Black, which I've carried for quite some time. Rusty Black is an iron oxide line. And it has a copper coating underneath. So when you look at this, it's kind of like, say, well, you know, it don't look kind of like, not really. You put them up next to each other. No, no, no. But here's the trick. With Rusty Black, you want to distress it. And I've showed you this before. If you distress Rusty Black, this is what's going to happen. Got my steel wool on it. Oh boy, that lights up. Yeah. I'm not, I don't remember seeing that. Mm -hmm. It takes it back to the copper under layer. Oh boy. And you just get that copper flash flying out. And I see the difference when you have them side by side. I, that really shows up to me, the difference. Mm hmm So, I mean, that's, that's a lot of difference. Mm hmm And then, um... Here's a filigree. This might be kind of fun to distress. Let me take and do this one for you. It's simple. You can see you just got to have your steel wool and a little bit of elbow grease. And you could do it if you have a buffer, you know, with a little bit of grit on it. But you want to be careful you don't take too much off. Sometimes with the buffers, um, you can take too much off. Sometimes you just pick it up in your hand. I might have selected a few better pieces to get to, to show you this, how this works. But anyway, you can see that the copper is coming out. And if you put swellagant patina over this, the traditional patina like in the Tiffany green, it will go green. It will bring out the green. And then you're going to have an absolutely marvelous piece. So that, let me get that mess out of there. And our new matte black line. I've got a bunch of pieces of it here to show you. What's the difference? Well, a lot. There's copper under that. And it's more rusty looking. This is just matte, flat, black. Okay? And there's a lot that you can do with it. But it does distress nicely too. I'm going to take, uh, I think I'll take this bigger piece and I'll distress it to show you what the matte black looks like when you distress it. It's got this beautiful satin ebony type look to it. It's not just like it was black primered. It's it's not the same. If you got black primer paint and put on it, it's not black primer. It's it's uh, an artisan made and um, when you distress it back. I've not ever seen this distressing that I remember. It's fantastic. Isn't it though? Wow. It is fantastic. Oh, that's just something. I like to add Patina Gilder's paste to this again. In fact, I just sold a piece off my Etsy jewelry store today that had a fairy in it that was made from this piece that I did just this very thing to. And I drilled out the shoulders right here and right here and added Patina Gilder's paste to it, which is that kind of teal blue. And it was striking. Oh, how about that? That is amazing. So you can do it or not do it. Now, since I did that, I'll need to seal that again, okay? If I hadn't, it would have been fine just the way it was, okay? Here is a piece that I made. I don't know, Javi, can you get this? 
And, oops, I'm going to move these little pieces. I made this today with a bunch of different stuff. I made it with our silverware stuff. There's a piece of gunmetal chain on here. There's a piece of matte black chain on here. There's some black check beads. Silverware silver plate. And then one of our alcohol inked fairies that we did, oh, I don't know, a couple months ago. If you want to go back through the videos, if you like to buy resin cameos, start alcohol inking them and antiquing them, and the detail will just come up, and you'll wonder, why didn't I do this before? I never want to use a cameo again that's just plain no. white. There's no reason to. It makes it so much better. And then this is the, the matte black mount with it. But you can see how well all those different colors blend together. And I love to mix metals. And then of course this chain here is just a piece of repurposed chain. This is bright silver chain that I got out of a sample lot from one of my suppliers. So I mean I've got all kinds of stuff on here that I just used up and put together. And it's, it's really special. It's a long piece. I like, I like long. Are you too? Yeah, and the way that I used, let me put it back on here. The way that I used it, um, as I took the piece, instead of hanging it like this with the hole up, I hung it down and then I went through the piercings to put on. I kind of like to use it that way, it makes it more versatile. Okay, so there you can see. Ways to, okay, yeah. one last thing, well, actually, a couple. I want to show you the difference between matte black and gunmetal. Okay. This is matte black book chain. You can see we got plenty of it. This is awesome stuff. It's a little spendy. Oh, yes, it is. But you can take six inches and make a bracelet. So a foot will make you two bracelets. Or you can use it for a bib finding for the beginning of a bracelet and just hang from this much. Anyway, this is the matte. It's got that satiny look to it, okay? This, however, is gunmetal. Can you see it's glossy? In comparison, are you getting that in there? Am I too far up? It's glossy in comparison. Okay, we carry a little bit of gunmetal chain because it blends, okay? And it's easier to get matte black now than it was in chain for a while. It was hard to get matte black chain. Now we have a, a couple of nice places where you get it. But uh, some people still like it. Now this is U.S. made and it doesn't have nickel in it, but it's very hard to get a good gunmetal finish that doesn't have nickel in it. We used to carry gunmetal and it used to iridize, it used to nest. We had so much trouble with that finish and then plus it was just really, really full of nickel because many silver finishes as well as gunmetal cannot be made effectively except by a master player without nickel. And years ago, everything had nickel in it because nickel strengthened the plating finishes. But now master platers have learned ways to do it so they get that allergen out. It's not a carcinogen, it's an allergen. People are allergic to it. I so am. some pe many people mm -hmm. are. Um, so if you can avoid nickel when you're working with metal, you want to do it. Okay? So that's the difference between the matte black. The matte black looks like ebony wood to me. I mean, it's just it is rich, nice. rich. And see, we here's gunmetal jump rings. There's, these are the matte black jump rings. And you can tell the difference. They're just matte. You know, they're just all black. Let me take a few of these out of here and put next to it. You'll see the difference. They're shiny. See? It's glossy. I see. Yeah. Gunmetal. Gunmetal kind of looks like hematite. Hematite stone? It does. Yeah. It does. Uh -huh. I wondered what it was. I love gunmetal, actually, but I only want it if I can get it nickel-free, and it's, it's very hard to get a good nickel-free. And honestly, right now, matte black is the hot deal, so we're sticking with matte black. Okay, my last one, my PA stair resistance, and I don't know if I'm saying that right because I don't speak French, but anyway, you know what I mean, is silverware silver plate. This is a bracelet that we made for darling little Jordan Provocateur's wedding. She hasn't seen it yet. She watches this video. She'll see She'll it. She'll see it, yeah. This has got, even it's got her date on the back, May 10th. Um, beautiful, beautiful piece. And this is her gift. This is to her. To her two brides. Yes. Yeah. And it's made from our silverware, silver plated materials, and then our antique silver plated book chain. But to show you the difference, here's another piece. This is silverware, silver plate. How gorgeous is that? It's muted. It's got a shine to it. 
that looks like your grandmother's old silver service. It's 99.9% .9 fine silver, three mil thick over the brass. It's there, just so gorgeous. I'm and sure it's nickel has, free. So. There are other finishes mm. that mimic it, but they are not it. No. This is the bomb. Look at this flower. This reminds me of the old Hill Tribes silver that you can buy. But what would you pay for that in Hill Tribes? I don't know. $25, $30. I don't even know anymore. Silver's gone so high, I have no idea. This piece from us is, I think, under $5. And it's handmade, put together. It's brass, um, solid brass pieces that are put together with kick press, and then they're plated with this wonderful high-end finish. This is what high-end designers use. So that's what I wanted to stress to you. You could use a finish like this, which is our old silver finish that we had before this. It's kind of flat, muted. This has nickel in it. It's not strong like this. It costs about what Brass Ox does. A lot of people still carry it for their silver line. If you're going to go over it with patina or reseal it or something, it would be fine. But we just found out we don't want to carry it anymore. We don't want to use it. We don't want to offer it because it's important to us to teach you to build value into your work. If you're just new and you're starting out, you're saying, yeah, but you know, stuff is so expensive and I've got to buy my tools. And go easy, go slow, be imaginative, be clever in your designs, make a little go a long way. You don't have to load it up with everything like I do, but use quality. Quality means enduring work, it means customers returning, it means satisfaction for you as an artist and for your customer. So that's basically what I wanted to talk to you today about is the quality finishes that we have at Bisu Boutiques. We have eight of them and raw brass. And I also have uh, item numbers that I've printed out here. Maybe Javi can watch the uh, feed as it goes along and get some of them on there for you because they didn't get them all up. Um, to, or I didn't say them on here. But uh, everything that you see here we have in stock at bsuboutiques.com. This is our line. This is what separates us. This is what makes us special, I think. Besides the fact that we offer you all this instruction and my 27 years experience in this business for free. I don't charge for videos. If you watched, for example, our etching video a couple of weeks ago, you know, that should have been a paid video, hands people down. People have told you that. Kate's, Kate's video, for people have said, why do mm -hmm. you give so much away for free? And down the road, we may do some Skype consulting to help you out. That'll be, there will be a cost, but it'll be reasonable. Um, but right now, our videos are free. Your patronage at bsuboutiques.com, just like the PBS announcements, yeah. is what supports us being able to take this time every week, prepare all this stuff to share with you and show you. And, you know, I would encourage you, come buy a piece of this silverware, silver-plated material, this stuff, and then go over to one of the big box stores and hold it up to one of their imported pieces. You'll and see the and difference. See the difference. Yeah. And you're going to find out that the imported pieces cost as much or more than ours. Their tools cost as much or more than ours, and they're not as good. How do I know ours are good? Because it's what I use. So everything I have in my place, I use it. And that's why I know it's good for the money. I look for reasonable things that work well. And so that's why I want to see you have a successful journey as an artist, use good stuff, and I really appreciate it when you come to visit us at Bisa Boutique. So I hope to see you there one day soon. Try just a few things and see if it isn't a little bit better and a little bit more fun to work with. And hey, whatever, we're going to keep making the videos because we are so pleased with your response. And we were really delighted to present our line to you. I think it's the first time I've gone through yeah, and showed everything. Yeah. I've done a few things, but to show you everything we have right now, so it's eight finishes plus raw brass. Seeing everything together like that and seeing the differences too makes mm -hmm. it, you know, it is very and helpful. what you can do. And if you have comments or questions, feel free to ask them here. I am watching uh, to see what the commentary is, and we ask you to please be kind. If there's something you don't like about what I said, I understand there's differences of opinion and you're welcome to them.
but uh, please be respectful and we're very happy that we've been able to help so many people. I am delighted with the beautiful letters and comments that we get privately and on YouTube. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you share with us. And please come join us at the Bisu Boutique's Creative Group at Facebook. Love to see you there. And the next video, we're going to show you another technique. So I hope you'll be with us for that. And we look forward to meeting with you again real soon.